fruit is powerful, right? Yep. And we've known about this since biblical times. But now fruit's bad? I don't think so. Don't be fooled by the fruit fear. Hey everyone, it's Ben and Ashley back again for another video with you guys. And in this episode, we are discussing the second Medical Medium podcast that was out. We're going to give a little quick recap and then also kind of just discuss our thoughts on everything. And this was also a very, another heavy topic that he basically dropped a lot of bombs <laughs> Yeah, so this one is about fruit fear and the fear of fruit and, you know, going to the doctor and that doctor telling you you shouldn't eat fruit and the, this is why you shouldn't eat fruit. And people listening to these doctors and doing what they're told, stop eating fruit. And so this episode, he covers all the reasons you should never give up fruit because fruit is such a powerful tool. Yep. And the fear of fruit. And the fact that that is going to cause it to go extinct. Crazy to think <laughs> that fruit would eventually be gone. Maybe not in our lifetime, right? But Yeah, he didn't say when. It didn't He said not in our lifetime, but it sounds like it's, you know, building up to a point to where eventually fruit will no longer exist and cause all sorts of problems. Yeah, and he says eventually the stores won't carry fruit anymore. Yeah, because right now people aren't buying as much fruit with the whole fruit fear that's going around. So stores are having to throw out tons of fruit, tons of fresh fruit juices. Farmers are not selling as much, so a lot of them are going out of business. Yeah, right? which eventually leads to farmers burning their crops because they have to use the land for other things. Yeah, it's really unfortunate and he says that you know then the wildlife which feed off of fallen fruit mm -hmm. they eventually start to go away because they don't have food or the type of food that's going to help build their immune system totally and then all the pollinators that have to be affected by all of this they rely yeah. on the fruit blossoms the bees the hummingbirds all the wonderful butterflies you know, all these away. things will eventually go away. And then you think of even the livestock because the livestock grass fed meat that feeds off of grass, but it also feeds off of wildflower and herbs when it's feeding off this grass, which then actually helps the... Yeah, he says that that helps the livestock fight disease. And once they don't have the wildflowers to eat, eventually they're going to get disease and, you know, people are, they're going to have to put all this livestock down because of disease. Yeah, so there's so no... So <laughs> it's <there's> like no, <laughs> this huge ripple effect and then, of course, it comes back and affects us, right? Totally. Because fruit is so nutritious and provides so many, and we'll get into more detail about that, but... And then you've got, <laughs> and then all of a sudden... Just like so many things. Uh, they start coming, research and science, botched research and science starts pushing, you know, artificial fruits. Because stuff that tastes like the fruit but is made from mm -hmm. sugar and toxic things right, that we don't just want. going to add more of a burden to your body and not help you in any way where fruit helps give you, it gives you life basically, mm -hmm. right? It, yeah, totally. And it... It gives you life, it also produces life. So fertility is gonna go way even more on the downfall. I mean, fertility's already at a, a low right now, but he says that it's gonna continue to go down. Fruit. And you need to eat fruit to bear fruit, is what he says. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> that's the heavy part, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think we covered all of that. Well, not, not all of it, but we'll get into, let's start getting into like, um, you know, how this all started and like yeah, okay. who created the fruit fear and stuff like that. Okay. So there was a sabotage that took place, right? Yeah. He said about 10 years ago, a group of health officials uh, put together this plan to create this fruit fear to keep people sick. 
Yeah, and doctors are good people. They go to school for all the right reasons. They want to help people. Yep. So why would they want to make us sick? But they, so it's what they're taught. They're being taught this whole fruit fear, you know, and doctors, of course, want to help everyone. So they're just giving you the latest and the greatest of this research, which is paid for research. Sure. And when really fruit is not going to harm you. Yeah. And then this got to all the doctors. So conventional doctors, naturopaths, chiropractors, herbal doctors, medicine doctors, the works. Yep. Unfortunately. Even then, when he was chronically sick, was told not to eat too much fruit. Yes. To kind of stay away. All right. So let's go through some of the rumors that you will hear that's behind the whole fruit fear. So I think the big one that we all know is that it causes diabetes, but it does not. There's also the rumor that it causes hypoglycemia, gut problems, UT, UTIs, candida, yeah. can affect you if you have Lyme disease. And, I mean, these are all just rumors and the, the list goes on. So why is fruit so important? Fruit has phytochemicals in it, it has trace minerals, it has anti-cancer fighting properties. It has vitamin C, as we all know. I think we all know that one. Mm -hmm. It is antiviral. Antibacterial, antifungal. Mm -hmm. It's got undiscovered uh, nutrients, uh, vitamins and minerals. It's uh, got living water properties. It's got antioxidants. I mean... Anti-worm expelling properties, so like with parasites, oh, yeah. it gets rid of parasites. It's basically a huge immune system building Boost. tool. Yeah, totally. Uh. <laughs> the fruit fear demonizers mm. are instilling this fear in us, telling us that fruit has way too much sugar, mm -hmm. right? And that we should not... We should not have that much of that sugar. Mm -hmm. When you're probably already eating stuff there's that has sugar in it. There's sugar in so many things. And Anthony lays this out in his podcast where you're just like, oh yeah, like of course those have sugar. Yeah. There's even sugar in meat. You know, when a cow is grazing on the grass, the wild herbs and the vegetables, that creates blood sugar within the cow. And then that's why when you cook meat, meat caramelizes because that's the sugar in meat but yet on the back of the label when you buy your yeah. meat it doesn't say they won't tell you that there's actually sugar, sugar in it it says fat in right. it but they don't even get the right amount of fat correct because mm -hmm. they have no idea how much fat is in each yep. piece of meat yeah yep and then he also says you know if you have a hamburger there's sugar in the bun there's sugar in the meat there's sugar in the cheese. There's sugar in the mayo. Yeah, if you have a pizza, there's sugar in the bread. There's sugar in whatever your toppings are, the sauce, the cheese. Yeah. If you have tacos, there's, there's sugar in tacos. There's sugar I mean, in chips. There's sugar in bread. You're having a lot, like... A lot of cereals have sugar. Totally. The milks you're putting in there, even if it's like a healthy one like oat milk. Nut milks, they all have sugar in it. They all have sugar. So when you when you know they're saying that sugar is bad for you and they're blaming it on fruit, but yet they don't talk about all of the other sugars that you're already consuming that have sugar in. Yeah. And that's what's causing you to maybe have cavities and things like that, you know. Which it's, is what we're going to talk about next. <laughs> <laughs> the rotting teeth. That's the second. That's a, another rumor that, that mm -hmm. gets started. That the the sugar in fruit is going to rot your teeth. Because fruit has all this sugar. Yeah. But that's not the case. Because it's everything else that's causing the rotting of the teeth. Yeah, everything that we just discussed all has sugar in it. But yet the, the one orange you eat... It, with your breakfast maybe once a week or once a day is the thing that's rotting your teeth. I and mean, it's not. We know that like before we were on medical medium 
we did such a small amount of fruit. It wasn't like we were having fruit every single day. Yeah, it was maybe like a banana and an apple. Yeah, and I mean, we'd have those chocolate bars and we'd have some chocolate <laughs> cake here and there. And But yeah, that's not the cost. Cookies. That's not rotting your teeth. It's the fruit. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> and it's unfortunately, you know, it's like this fear that has been let out into the world. So then everyone starts kind of thinking it. I mean, but we all still know, well, fruit's kind of healthy. So we're still eating it. And that's what Anthony says. Like people are still eating it because they know deep inside it's still good for you. But then you keep hearing that too much of it is bad. So people aren't eating enough. And then unfortunately are getting sick because the more fruit you eat, the better off your health is. Totally. Another thing you're gonna hear is that your brain runs off of fat, and your brain actually runs off of sugar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, it's funny because he said that he's talked, you know, he's talked to a lot of people from around the world, and there's people who have eaten animal brains and say it's very sweet. Um, which is funny. <laughs> I saw on Andrew Zimmerman on TV a while back, I saw him eat some monkey brain, and that was what he said. He said it was sweet. Oh my gosh. Which is odd, but Anthony says if you mix celery and banana together, that simulates the taste of brain to a tea. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, and another point that he brought up was you know, whenever you receive like really bad news, maybe a breakup, maybe a divorce, maybe someone passed away, you know, people crave sweet things mm -hmm. and they're maybe grabbing for the ice cream and it's because their brain has gone into shock and it wants sugar. Yeah, it's, it's you know, there's liver heat. Well, there's brain heat too. Yeah. Your, your brain heats up and neurotransmitters burn out and need to get rejuvenated and the way that we do this is with fruit another reason why people are fearing fruit is because they're told that the sugar from fruit will make them gain weight right yeah oh yeah and that's so far from the truth because yeah. you know the sugar in fruit doesn't make you gain weight it's those other things that you're eating that might have fruit in it mm -hmm. so like you know that that blueberry bagel that you have in the morning with the blueberries in it but you also have what cream cheese on it you probably are, it's probably not gluten free yeah but it has blueberries in it so you think the blueberries are the cause of it or that blueberry muffin you have in the morning you know and that is not the sugar that is causing the problem. It's the fat. Yeah. It's the fat in those things that are preventing the cells from right. rejuvenating. And there's another thing, and we've heard this a lot with people who are healing from chronic illness. When they start doing a more plant-based diet, eat a lot of fruit, they find that they're bloating a lot, thinking mm -hmm. that, you know, like, what the heck? Am I gaining weight? I'm so bloated. And that's usually when a liver is really overburdened with toxins and it's detoxing and the fruit is helping push things out and it's causing this bloating. Totally. And you guys have to remember that, you know, our bodies are just bogged down with all sorts of toxins, right? We have pathogens, we have uh, all the unforgiving for the heavy metals, the radiation, the DDT. The streaks in the sky. Yeah. If you watched our last podcast discussion. Yeah, it's like w you walk outside and you're already getting bogged down from environmental toxins. You mm -hmm. walk through the grocery store and you probably smell 20 different perfumes and colognes. And, you know, that's going to bog, bog you down. So you have to remember that our bodies are already really bogged down with all of these toxins. And the minute you introduce fruit into your diet, it starts doing work and it starts moving all of these toxic things out of our body so we can heal yep you know and remember the toxic ledge we talked about we've talked about it in two in two of our episodes the celery juice uh, cleanse video and then 
eliminate the fats, beat the virus. We talk about this toxic ledge, this ledge where all of the, you know, all of the proteins, all the rancid fats, all of the pathogens, all of the toxic sludge, it all sits at, at this edge and you have to eat fruit and get mineral salts in your body to get that, that broken down before the glucose in the fruit and those mineral salts can actually make it to the liver. So fruit will help you lose weight. Yeah, is that where we were? What we were talking about? <laughs> Heck yeah, that's gonna not, make you lose not weight. Not gain. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sorry, I went on a little rant there, but you know, it all makes sense. So, you know, you got to get the fruit in. You got to get that ledge worked, and you know, you're gonna lose the weight. Okay, so let's talk about the big one, why fruit does not actually cause diabetes. Yeah, it, when you go to the doctor, do they say, we need to check your blood fat, or do they need to say, do we need to check your blood sugar, right? You check your blood sugar, and that's how they determine if your levels are too high or low. And fruit gets blamed for this, when really, how it works is you eat that piece of fruit and when that fruit goes into your body it attaches itself to the insulin and then it makes its way into the cell but if you have fat with fruit it creates insulin resistance right the fat like then becomes like a shield and blocks the two from kind of hooking up yeah, it says, no, you can't get in here. <laughs> <laughs> it's blocked. So, so if you have a high-fat diet, then that the fruit you're eating is never making its way... To the cell. Yeah. Yeah, so it's the fat that is then causing the diabetes. Yeah, but people think it's the sugar in fruit that's causing it. Yeah. Think of all the other sugars you eat. We just laid out all the sugar in all these foods, you know. That is the sugar that's causing the problem. It's fat in that sugar. Yeah. So, so last summer, my dad went to the doctors, and they were told, or he was told that he was pre-diabetic. And the doctor said, "I have a, something I can pres prescribe you to help fix that." And my dad was like, "No, no, no. You know what? I'm gonna try diet and exercise first, and then we'll kind of go from there." So that's exactly what he did. He incorporated some more, um, just, you know, walks and changed up his diet, incorporated more fruits and veggies. And then I, of course, encouraged him to keep fats out at least in the morning time and to also really hydrate and to also eliminate the coffee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so lots of hydration, lots of more fruits and veggies in the morning and just letting his body really detox without any fats. Um, so with his persistence, with his, you know, healthier diet, he was able to reverse the pre-diabetic condition. Awesome. Quick camera switch. Okay, so we're back. We had to switch cameras. We were losing light on that other camera. We were afraid it was going to be too dark for you guys. So, so like Ashley's dad reversing his pre-diabetic. -diab I also had a similar experience, not being told I was pre-diabetes, but I was told to stop eating fruit. So a doctor told me to eat less fruit and eat more protein because I had lost like 35, 40 pounds over the course of six months. And so they were concerned that I wasn't getting enough calories. And so it was eat, eat as much calories as you can. I want you to eat eggs in the morning and I want you to eat pork with those eggs. So we went out, we got eggs, we got pork, these little pork sausages from Costco mm -hmm. and, uh, and they recommended more exercise. So I remember I'd eat my egg, have my pork, then I'd go to the gym, then I'd come back and this is when we first started juicing. So I remember we'd, I'd go to the gym and then we would, we would juice a little bit and this was this is before pre-medical medical medium, medium. Yeah. so we were kind of juicing a little bit we we knew that that was helping me but didn't know to the extent that, that well, yeah. we learned with 
with Good fats thing. and fruits and how they all work together. So now that we know that fruit and fats create the insulin resistance and we need the fruit by itself to use fruit as a therapy, we s stop doing fats in the morning, right? Yep, and we have a video where we talk about this too. And, and you know, it's like, it's not only helping the insulin resistance, it's also helping the nutrients get to your body when you totally. don't have those fats. Because when there's fats in the system, it's harder for those nutrients to travel to all your organs. So it's like what Anthony was saying about all of the toxins that live within us and mm -hmm. all of our bodies are just dirtied up and we need the housekeeper and fruit is that housekeeper that comes in and cleans house and the fruit has a lot to clean before it gets to the liver mm -hmm. where it can actually do work and so we learned that pretty quick uh when we got further into medical medium we realized okay maybe we shouldn't be having any fats in the morning right yeah we didn't know that at first i mean we were even putting i think hemp seeds in our heavy metal detox smoothie because we thought we needed the protein and then so do not put anything no protein in <laughs> your heavy metal smoothies or any of your smoothies really um it, yeah, it took us a little while to realize, oh, we're not supposed to have the fats until later. And, you know, we gradually got rid of them, got yeah. rid of them and then kept it till dinner time. Some days we do no fats all day just to really cleanse it up. So go watch our video. We did a video on what we eat in a day on medical medium. And that is really how we've been eating in a day. And that's the best way to really maximize uh, fruit as a medicine So neurological issues they're on the rise right now There's a lot of people out there dealing with all sorts of neurological conditions yeah. You know, I was one of them. I had vertigo. I had uh, Tingles numbness. I had heart palpitations. I was having panic attacks migraines uh, blurred vision off balance uh, uh, Depression anxiety, you know yeah uh joint pain all this stuff is caused from neurological issues which not from fruit right no this was not caused from fruit you weren't eating enough fruit i mean <laughs> we were you were probably eating maybe a few things of fruit a day if that if lucky i did i wasn't a big fruit eater but uh i wasn't eating any fruit so i know it wasn't caused by the fruit so what else could it be caused from? Well, all that other stuff, right? Yeah. Why I bring this up is your neurological issues, all your nerves in your body, they're made up of from natural sugars, from fruit, from glucose. Mm -hmm. That's how a nerve cell is made up of. So mm -hmm. they need the fruit. They need the to fruit to properly function. Exactly. So you eat more fruit, some of these symptoms, they start to go away. So that's what we did. So we started incorporating more and more fruit and over time, those neurological conditions, they, they went away and I don't deal with them anymore. So who here likes to age? Nobody. There's only me here with you <laughs> and all the animals behind us. Okay, well, let me tell you <laughs> that fruit is anti-aging and you probably have heard that before but it's the truth it stops or slows down oxidation oxidizing me equals death it slows that down yeah it kills your cells and dying cells equal oxidation yeah it does and the yeah. fruit eliminates that or slows it down so the secret to looking young for a very long time and to feeling young is to eat a lot of fruit. Yeah, the fruit is has antioxidants, antioxalates, right? Mm -hmm. So your body is oxalating and the fruit prevents that from happening. 
and we're all oxalating. Think about it, we've got pathogens going on, we've got heavy metals in the body, we've got radiation in the body, we've got all this DDT, these toxic chemicals that we're being exposed to. And then there's, you, like I said earlier, you walk outside and you're instantly exposed to all these environmental toxins. And that's what's making you age. Yeah. And here's a crazy fact that Anthony said. He said that caffeine can wipe out years of antioxidants. Yeah. Years. Yeah. So your cup of coffee in the morning can wipe out years of antioxidants that you've built up. So you do all this work building up this great immune system, building up all these antioxidants, and then you destroy it with that cup of coffee in the morning. Or other caffeine sources like cacao. Yeah, or cacao. Chocolate. And, you know, uh, science and research that is paid for by the caffeine industry, they're, tr they're struggling to find antioxidants. They're trying to find. In coffee and cacao. So they can promote it. Yep. And then right. get you guys to buy more uh, caffeinated products and then destroy your your immune system. Your antioxidants, your immune system yeah. even further. Yeah. And I think he said like a bite of an apple or something has way more antioxidants than even like a piece of chocolate or something. I believe it. Where they, you know, they're trying to find antioxidants in these chocolate things so they can promote it and say oh chocolate's good for you coffee's good for you but really they want you to be on those things for a reason because they're addictive and they're they cause oxidation so another interesting thing anthony brought up was that there's rumors that get started by these conventional doctors or what we're learning now is it's not just the conventional doctor spreading these rumors, it's all the doctors. So another thing that gets spread is that uh, hybridized fruit, fruit that's been hybridized, is part of the genetically modified food chain. And that's not true. You know, fruit, food, vegetables, it's all been hybridized for a very long time. Before it, GMO, right? Before GMO, this has, you know, been done for hundreds and hundreds of years, and this is how uh, fruit and vegetables can adapt to the, to, the, to the different climates. It's how, you know, we've been able to successfully have all this wonderful fruit for a, a very long time. And this includes, like, seedless varieties. You know, people fear the seedless varieties when there's heirloom varieties out there that are seedless and still have all of the nutrients and the vitamins and minerals that your body needs. So, so hybridized fruits and veggies are not GMO. Yeah. It's so completely different. Don't think of like, if it says like hybrid variety or like F1 hybrid, you know, on the seed packet, you know, don't think that means genetically modified. It, it doesn't. So let's talk about fruit. Let's talk about how to use it as a therapy, how to use it as medicine. You know, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is not fear fruit. That's what we've just been talking eliminate about. Eliminate that completely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So eliminate that thought, eliminate the idea that you should fear fruit because you shouldn't. And then make sure that you're getting plenty of fruit in without your fats. So. Maybe you're trying to at least keep fats out in the morning and you're filling up on a bunch of fruit. If you're feeling ballsy and you want to keep that detox going throughout the entire day and wait till dinner time, that's even better. Or if you even want to keep it out completely all day. But eat that fruit without fat so you can take advantage. Some videos to check out. Do check out the uh, celery juice cleanse video because we explain exactly how you should be eating to keep the detox going, keep the cleansing going. And then uh, the other one you want to check out is how long fats stay in the bloodstream and the liver. And that will help you understand some of the foods that uh, you consume and how long they might stay in the bloodstream. And uh, we talk a lot about fruit and why it's important to... Yeah 
bring it in without fat. Another thing, so fruit is a very low calorie food. So when you're eating it, you're gonna get hungry much quicker opposed to having your eggs and bacon and toast in the morning. Those things fill you up much for a much more longer time because they have all that fat in them. Fruit, you're gonna get hungry. So make sure you keep on eating it because it's a low calorie. You wanna graze like a cow basically. Yeah, right? think of a cow like a cow in a field. They eat grass constantly. That's what they're doing all day. So every hour you should be incorporating more and more fruit and building upon that building upon all the di the different vitamins and minerals and nutrients that yeah. you're you're getting from it. You can have some vegetables too. Why and not? then you can have <laughs> you can have smoothies. You know, fruit smoothies. Throwing some leafy greens. You can, like we're not hating against vegetables at all. <laughs> and then you could have uh, dehydrated fruit as well, and that's that's something that yeah. we eat a lot of: dried figs and dried mangoes and stuff like that. With the dried stuff, you just want to stay hydrated because. Uh, because you're it's, taking the hydration out when you're dehydrating it. It makes your body work harder. Mm -hmm. So we try to have the dried fruit later in the day and fill up on the more hydrating fruits in the earlier part of the day. Yep. So we want to leave you with something to think about. Okay. More to think about, right? <laughs> More to think about. I'm sure you're thinking about all the stuff we just told you. Your brain is going crazy right now. You probably need some fruit, right? right. To, to right. cool the shock. You're right. You're really right. Anthony said that too. I can't take, oh, okay. I can't okay. take credit. <laughs> okay. So in at the end of this podcast, Anthony says that they mentioned fruit over 300 times in the Bible. It's true. That was no mistake. But something to think about here. If you ever read the Bible, if you get into it, great. In the Bible, a lot of the people that are talked about in the Bible live in hundreds of years. Why? How is this possible? How is it that, that here, today, our lifespan is maybe a hundred years if you're lucky, but nowadays with all chronic illness and mystery disease people are dying off you know before they're 80 well how is it in the Bible that people are living hundreds of years old think about it the other thing to think about is kings and queens you know in medieval times the kings and the queens mm -hmm. they used to get fruit shipped in from all over the world while the peasants used to feed on gruel used to have to get no fruit and used to have to dry out meats just to try to survive during, during the winter, winter yeah. a lot of them would would end up dying from all sorts of diseases and the kings and queens and the upper class would live much longer yeah because they were eating fruits, fruits. not so different from how we exist today, right? You know, are we the peasants? The last thing. <laughs> no, because we're eating fruit. I know, but before we had fruit, before we had this knowledge, we yeah. were the peasants. Right. The other thing is uh, back in sailing days where they'd sail around and that's how they got places, they'd end up going on these voyages and they'd be gone for years. And sailors would end up getting this thing called scurvy. Which is a vitamin C deficiency. Which is a vitamin C deficiency. And it was eventually discovered that... So they didn't know the name vitamin C. They didn't know what was curing the scurvy. Right. Because vitamin C wasn't named vitamin C right. back then. Someone had discovered that oranges and lemons in like the 1700s cured the scurvy but they didn't realize it was the vitamin c until like the early 1900s so fruit is powerful right yep and we've known about this since biblical times but now fruit's bad i don't think so don't be fooled by the fruit fear yeah and you guys embrace the fruit because we have fruit now and like we said in the beginning, unfortunately, it's going to go extinct. And our ancestors in the future are not going to have it. So 
we need to just embrace it and take advantage of its full nutrients. Cherish it. Yeah, completely. So I think that's everything, you guys. We're so happy that you joined us for this, our recap plus our thoughts and some other good tidbits that we brought in. If you like this video, maybe you don't like the facts because we don't either, but if you <laughs> liked that, what, what we're sharing with you guys, please like the video and be sure to subscribe um, and hit that little bell so you get notified every time we upload a new video. And go check Anthony's podcast out. Yes. That's where we're getting this information. You want to hear it from him. Listen to the full thing at the podcast. This is just a snippet, a summary, our thoughts. Get the full thing. Listen to the podcast. It's worth it. Yep. And comment below. Let us know what you're thinking. Let us know what your thoughts are on Fruit Pier. Yeah, you if know, you have I, any questions about anything we talked about, too. Totally, totally. So that's it. So right. it's getting late. Let's get at, get dinner going, we huh? Beat the light. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys later. See ya.